sort of fancy meeting you here. Well, I should introduce myself. I'm Cyberx with Outlandishly Crafted. And today we're going to talk about some misconceptions about using multiple textures, multiple geos, multiple materials in one entity. It's probably been told to you over and over. You cannot do that. Well, look here what I have. I have a tail on my player. As the thunder rolls, as the thunder rolls. Let's just get that stopped. So here's my tail. You can see my player. Now let's jump over. And you can see in my player entity file, I have a player tail as a separate geo. You already can see that this is doable because you have a cape as a separate geo. You have, I have uh, overlays for wet and dry as separate geos. I have a default for my player character custom geo. All of these, I have multiple textures in here. This is all in just player. You could do this for any entity you want. So how? How do we get all of these things into one place? Well, you can see right here, we have a geo. We actually have our material set to the bone name, to this guy, or whatever we're going to call it. In this case, we're going to call it player tail A. We've got player tail A here. And then we've got our player tail A here. And then what we're doing is we're going to add in a separate render controller. Did you know you can do that? You can have multiple render controllers using Mojang to determine how they turn on and off. So for the tail, I've just got it turned on all the time. So when this guy is on, that means this guy is on. My tail's on. And you can just see in that render controller that all it is is naming the material so that it's applied to the right body parts, naming the texture, and naming the geo. So instead of doing default, default just means, hey, default up here, default, we just name it. It's that simple. We literally just put a name in. And then animations are no different than animating anything else. You just have an animation that runs against the tailbones now. So let's jump over. Anything different or anything weird in here? Yeah, we do need to make sure that we don't have some filter for part availability because that's an issue. It likes to hide the parts if you don't add it in here. So you might have to come in and add in um, that part to being see to be able to be seen on third person. That's okay. So you just come in here and add in whatever you want. I have it. I think I have it on all the time. So I don't even think I had to put it in here because it just shows up. So there is no math. But you can see on my overlays for wet and dry that I have those in there. And that's just a geo that turns on and off. Has its own um, its own uh, material. So let's look at, well, how do you do this in Blockbench then? So in Blockbench, all we're going to do is we're going to have two textures. We're going to texture the bones we want with the texture that we want it to be. So here we've got the texture for the tail perfectly set, and we've got the texture for the player perfectly set. And then over here, I've got the root for the player. So you can see I can just turn this off and on. It's not inside the player's root. So it's separate. And all we're going to do is we're going to export this part of the geo without the player's body. So if we come up here and we take these little picture things off, it's not going to export any of these bones. So all it's going to export is this tail. And that's going to give us a second geo. And then we're going to not export the tail. We're going to export the player. And all we're going to do in the meantime when we're doing that is change the model identifier. So what we end up with is a model identifier geo for the tail only and a model uh, identifier for the player only. So we have a player geo now 
and we have a tail geo. We started with one, and then we just so it's easy, but say you had 20 geos and you just want to put them all in one entity, you could do that too. They don't have to be done like this. This is just easier for me to line everything up, get everything put in how I want it, and then export each piece of the geo to to a file separately, changing the identifier for each one. So we have our player fighter, and then we have our tail. And then all we're gonna do is back into our player entity resource pack file. We're gonna put in here those geos with their names. So default goes to fighter, and player tail goes to player tail geo. And as long as we have our render controller in here applying to it, and our texture, that's being applied to the geo through the render controller. You have to think of the render controller as controlling what renders. It's a render controller, right? So it's determining which of these textures and geos and materials go together. And because you can have multiples, you can apply these however you want. You could have all kinds of crazy combinations all started and stopped with Mojang for first person weather or whatever. And that's how I'm doing my weather effects. So when you're in the rain, the player has an overlay and that overlay is simply showing the player is wet. So for example, if I come down here and I get into the water, all of a sudden the geo that's the water, that's, uh, overlay the wet overlay now plays and i get a wet overlay when i'm out of the water that geo turns off you could do that with hide as well but that's all we're doing we're literally just playing so that could be anything you want to turn off and on can be put in the player's geo or any entity's geo and it can be toggled on and off as desired with just simple mojang so that's it. That's how to get multiple geos, multiple textures, all working in one entity. I know it's been said it can't be done, but that's really just um, preference and people don't know how to do it because they've never seen it. So they assume that it can only be done in Java. And, and that's not true. There is no technical reason why you can't have multiple textures, multiple geos, multiple materials in one entity other than Blockbench just doesn't natively support it easy to do. But now that I've showed you how to export them separately, it's very easy to build out your entire texture collection, do really advanced stuff, and there it is. So thanks for watching. I'm CyberX with Outlandishly Craft, and I hope this helped. And if it does, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, make sure to keep those YouTube YouTube overlords happy. About 80% of our views and watches come from external sources, websites, and Google and Discord. So it, it, YouTube's really not doing anything to help us. So if you could share these, put them out there, show your friends, get this information in other people's hands so that we can overcome these limitations and everybody can have a better gaming experience. Keep being creative. Thank you for watching. I'm Cyberax with an outlandishly crafted. And this has been how to use multiple textures, multiple geos, multiple materials in your entities in Bedrock Minecraft. Now, if you'd like to know more about material stacking and the material set, I have a separate guide just for that. Go check it out on the YouTube channel, How to Do Materials. It's a fish tank, and it'll show you how to stack those materials correctly. Thank you.